Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the eve of Pole Valley for TUS, Trade Union Socialist Coalition. I'm Sheila Caffrey. I'm the Division President for the National Union of Teachers. And although tonight I'm only speaking in a personal capacity, I'm one of the growing members of, numbers sorry, of teachers in my union who's had enough of the privatisation across education. No longer is it just creeping in, but it's coming in as a full gallop and infecting over 50% of our schools now in Bristol, which are no longer local authority schools, but instead academies or trusts who can select on pupils, pay and conditions. And so Tusk is standing in Bristol to reject these cuts, privatisation and austerity, not only in education, but across all areas of our lives. Why should we accept it? There is an alternative. £800 billion is currently sat festering in big businesses' bank accounts. In the press this week, water companies refusing to pay their taxes. Why is this not being invested? If there is such a financial problem, why can't this money be used? Well, it's simple. The condemned government, following on from their cronies in Labour, have a slash and burn policy with one objective, to get rid of our welfare state. They are not content that unemployment and redundancies are through the roof. They are not content, content that people are losing their homes and living hand to mouth. All this doesn't make business for the rich, whilst the selling off of our services does. So that's why, as Tusk, we're standing in this election. For the millions, not the millionaires. What else is the alternative? A vote for Tories? Cuts. A vote for the Lib Dems? Cuts. A vote for Labour? Cuts. None of the independents have said they'll stop or even reverse the cuts. So a vote tomorrow for Tusk is against austerity. It's to show that another Britain and another Bristol is possible. And to start the creation of a new workers' party to represent ordinary people. And so I'd like to introduce our speakers. We have John, who is going to be speaking first. John McAnally is the Vice President of the PCS Union, a union which has been known to stand up repeatedly in, in uh, Britain for their members fighting against the cuts. He's also a national representative on TUS, as well as chair of Badaka, the anti-cuts uh, movement in Bristol. After John, um, Dave is going to speak. Dave Nellis is a former socialist councillor in Coventry and is also the national chair for TUS. And then finally, we'll hear from Tom. Tom Baldwin is our candidate in this election, who I'm hoping we're all going to be voting for tomorrow. So I'm going to pass to John first. Well, thanks very much. And I'll be voting for Tom tomorrow when I get back to Bristol from London, where I'm afraid I've got to go after uh, this meeting. Uh, for the very simple reason, he is the only voice, he's the only person standing in the elections tomorrow who's uh, against austerity. I would like to just start off by giving you one little figure. When universal credit comes in over the course of the next year or two, 40% of the staff, our members, who will be um, administering that new benefit will actually be claiming universal credit themselves, will be claiming benefits uh, themselves. And that just gives you just a little snapshot of what austerity is about and what conditions are like in this country where wages have been driven down to uh, uh, a very low level. Some of us have had no pay rises for the past, uh, for, for the past uh, four years. Uh, benefit levels have been cut. There's a attack on welfare. 30 billion taken out the welfare budget, while at the same time 30 billion has been given uh, to the, the richest in society in terms of tax breaks and to, uh, and to um, the big companies. They are trying to divide employed from unemployed workers. And of course, behind all of this is an, an overall attack, as Sheila has said, on the welfare state and the public sector itself. Now, if it's something like, I mean, figures vary, but something like between 12 to 18% uh, of the cuts have been implemented so far. And we, we understand what the impact is up to now. But if they continue with the cuts, uh, it's been calculated that by the year 2017, the public sector in Britain will be less spent on the public sector in Britain proportionately than there is in the United States of America. So that gives you just, a, a, again, a snapshot of what the future holds for workers in this country if we don't stand up against, if we don't stand up against the austerity programme. And again, the word privatisation has been mentioned. And if you wanted to sum up in one word precisely what the whole austerity programme is about, uh, 
on the basis of the cover of, a, of an economic crisis that was caused by their friends in the unregulated banks and the uh, uh, finance industry. They're, taking the, 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 they're trying to carry out the biggest privatisation programme in the history of this country. I think we have to be clear about privatisation, because that's what the cuts are actually predicated on, that's what the attacks on the trade unions are predicated on. And privatisation is not just a corrupt, but it's a corrupting influence within society itself. Under the last government, and it will be replicated when this law are uh, kicked out uh, uh, as, as, as well, the ministers who are currently sitting in departments like the HMRC, DWP and, and the elsewhere, who are bringing in private companies to steal our services and drive down trade union conditions, they will go into the boards of those companies after, a, I think it's an 18 month period, and they will then reap the rewards of becoming multi-millionaires because they've handed over the state assets that belong to you and I to the, to, to the private sector. And they understand history, I think, but the fact of the matter is we need to understand it as well. Because the reality is, it's because the charities in the private sector could not uh, uh, deliver certain services in society that it was done by the public sector. And in reality, privatisation, the, 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 the outsourcing is inefficient. It's more expensive than being delivered by the public sector. And when it comes to issues like benefits, it, it's highly immoral. I think most uh, reasonable people would think to uh, uh, make uh, profits out of people's misery. But worse than that, it simply doesn't work. But they don't care because they don't need to use any public services, we do. And this can only be done on the basis of a political consensus across all of the major parties in the country. That includes the nationalist parties uh, uh, um, and, and as well. And the consensus is there's no alternative to the market, there's no alternative to the uh, cuts. And to give you an example of the type of language it's used, I was up in Scotland just uh, a few weeks ago at the SNP conference, and it was the day after the, the current leader of the Scottish Labour Party, a, a person called Joanne uh, Lamont, attacked the SNP government because they're spending money on care. And she said that we need to get end, uh, we need to get, uh, we, we, we need to end the something for nothing culture. That is a Labour leader saying that, and that's what's right at the poison of uh, the political consensus, because there's no red lines anymore. And the Tories think, because there's no official opposition in Parliament, apart from one or two MPs, they can get away with anything. But they understand that in all likelihood it's going to be a one-term government, and that is why at this stage they're going for a scorched earth policy. I just want to make the point that over the course of the coming months, particularly at the beginning of uh, the new year, they're going to launch uh, an all-out attack on my union, which is uh, the, uh, the PCS. They're going to launch an all-out attack in the civil service as part of their hate campaign against the public sector generally. But why are they attacking our union? And the reason is because in the same way that Tom is standing as, uh, as candidate against austerity and for a no-cuts policy, it's because our union, since this government came to power, and under the last government, by the way, has operated on, 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 on a very serious policy of no cuts, no privatisation, no exceptions. Because if you accept the, the case for cuts, what you're actually saying is, don't cut my job, but cut her job or cut his job. And that's the road to division and defeat. But it's also because we've argued for an alternative, an alternative based on investment in the public sector, job creation, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, so on. But what we've also done, and, and, uh, is we've, we've, we've argued for the building of the anti-cuts movement. In Bristol, Bristol's probably one of the best examples in the country, where PCS and the NUT uh, actually set up uh, the, the anti-cuts movement in this city, and that's why it's always had a strong connection to the trade union movement, and that's why we've had such a strong anti-cuts movement in, 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 this, in, in, in this city. But the reason they're going to attack us, uh, they've been attacking us for years, but they're going to really ramp up this attack now, is because, because uh, there's nobody in Parliament speaking up for the broad mass of people in, in the country. It's unions like PCS, the RMT, and the anti-cuts movement, it actually became the official opposition in this country. And from their, their, their point of view, they have to silence that opposition. And that is because we argue for the widest possible alliance in society. I mean, we all know the slogans, the 1% and the 99%. But what, what is a fact? 
from, from the viewpoint, I think, of most people, is that the Tories and the Lib Dems never at any point got a mandate in this country to destroy uh, the health service. They never got a mandate to destroy uh, the welfare state. But the reason they hate PCS more than anything else, and they hate people standing up against them, but particularly PCS, is because they, we have uh, consistently, over the course of the last number of years, organised industrial action against them. And that is what they cannot tolerate. Because the reality is, it's on the, only on the basis of coordinated industrial action that we'll get rid of this government. Because I don't know about you, but I don't think we can wait till 2015 to get rid of them. And that is why, as far as our union is concerned, and it's why the hate is for it, we've said that uh, we, 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 you know, we need to build that coordinated industrial action. Now, in November the 30th last year, we saw the potential of the trade union movement with 2 million people on strike, and our union fought the attempt to sell out afterwards. And, that, and this reveals the problem we have as well. It's a crisis of leadership in terms of the trade union movement, where people like Brendan Barber can go off and retire, as he did at the TUC, he's just about to do, with a massive pension, after selling out the pensions of uh, public sector workers. And the truth of the matter is, the reason they don't start to talk out uh, against austerity, the reason they don't talk out strongly against uh, 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 the cuts, is, and, and this might be a strong thing to say, but they're part of the same, uh, they're part of the same unaccountable political uh, elite in this country, which is uh, making us pay for their crisis. So from that point of view, uh, uh, you know, PCS, while it will be under attack over the course of the, of the current, current period, I don't think there's any union better prepared in order to face that challenge. But we argued at the TUC last year and the year before for coordinated industrial action, and that's precisely what we are going to continue to argue for. We're going to be balloting our members again in the new year, and we will be arguing at the TUC for coordinated action. Now, at this year's TUC, I had the uh, privilege to talk on the uh, motion that was put forward by the Prison Officers Association, which called to looking for the practicalities of a general strike. Now, I believe that if we had a general strike in this country, a one-day general strike, that would irrevocably shift the balance of power in our favour. And that is what we are arguing for in terms of, uh, the, in, in terms of uh, the, uh, the TUC itself. But you'll hear a lot of these leaders say, you know, you can't have a general strike, it's, it's too difficult, there's legal complications, it's so difficult, it's almost like splitting the atom, you know, we, we, we simply can't do it. But I'll tell you what the reality is, every single union in this country has got a legitimate uh, trade dispute, either with uh, uh, the government uh, as civil servants or, or, or uh, with their employers, including private sector employers. I'll tell you how easy it would be to organise uh, a one-day general strike. All the TUC needs to do is to call the unions into a room and name the day. It's as simple as that. And that's what my union is arguing for. And I think that is the way to end this uh, 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 government's tenure. A one-day public, uh, a, a one-day, uh, a 24-hour general strike followed by further coordinated action. Because I don't believe that this government is strong. They have been given, a, 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 if you like, a, an open field where there's no opposition in Parliament. And from that point of view, I think a, a coordinated industrial action would they bring them down. So, in conclusion, I think there is a crisis of leadership uh, in the unions. There's certainly a crisis of leadership as far as, uh, as far as the main political parties are concerned. And that is why it's so important to hear a voice, voices uh, speaking out against austerity, speaking out against uh, the cuts. And it's one of the reasons why my union has voted overwhelmingly and uh, if, if to stand candidates in uh, national elections and we're looking at how at the present time or how uh, we're actually going to do that on a democratic basis. So from that point of view, I think, uh, you know, it's a very, very difficult period that we live in. There's a great deal at stake. Everything that people of my generation was brought up to expect uh, in terms of education, free health, is now under attack. So from that point of view, I think it is absolutely vital if we are to defend not only our own interests, but the interests of, a, of, of our children and the generation that's coming up, then we're going to have to stand firm against uh, austerity. What we need to do precisely, and this is why we should be voting for Tom tomorrow, doing what Tom's doing, standing out when nobody else, none of our candidates are prepared to speak against a uh, uh, austerity. That's what he's doing and that's why he deserves our, <coughs> he deserves our support. Thank you. <laughs>